My name is Robert Christopher Kopis, and I live in Amsterdam. I am on the board of the International Association for Near-Death Studies, ANDS. This book was published by them. Even though I studied economics, I published books about near-death experiences because I was captivated by them. I think my best work is this compilation of Endear quotes. Experiencers speak in this book. After reading Raymond Moody's book on a woman's life review and near-death experience, I became interested in NDs. Not being happy with her life was the most intriguing part of the life assessment. Nobody judged us, but we should feel guilty. This touched me because I was raised in a Roman Catholic home and learned about purgatory and damnation. I now see her point. Why criticize ourselves if love is paramount? Being in the light frees you from external judgment. Life ratings compare your life to others, hence they're unnecessary. Your relationships matter more than your acts. The supreme being, God, or whatever you call it is happy because the other side is love. My book has many amazing stories. Give me some examples. A witness said they escaped by removing a slice of bread from a toaster. Another story about a woman who had a near-death experience, NDE, in a dark place may interest Christians, but it also includes Muslim, Hindu, and other perspectives. Her excitement and love grew when she realized she was dead. She cocked her head at the heavy presence behind her, wondering how she could do that if she were dead. Who are you? She asked. I got you are the image and likeness, and I'm the original. This references the Bible's creation of man in God's likeness for Jews and Christians. With this NDE, God seemed present. Remember that many near-death tales mention light and unconditional love. There are many non-Christian accounts. However, it's important to note that some see Jesus Christ. Muslims may perceive Muhammad, Hindus Krishna. Since significant religious figures are also present in NDEs, cultural elements can influence them. However, NDs seem to return to light and love, often unconditional love. Some say unconditional love is too broad to express the sensation. Like any love, kid love is conditional. Love without limits awaits on the other side. Oneness and interdependence are commonly discussed. Despite living in different countries, you in Vietnam and I in Amsterdam, we are still connected. Despite our ignorance, we'll realize our eternal tie after death. The text offers quotes that say we are one, not just related. Some say we're divine, God's aspect, or God. Not my words, but endears. A Dutch woman who had a near-death experience, NDE, before dying said, God and I are one. Unity is ours. As one, we are flawless. There are many more quotes like this. Another narrative is about a woman who wanted to be a mother again during her near-death experience, NDE. She marveled at the abundance of freely available knowledge and wondered how we overlook it on earth. Since her newfound knowledge wouldn't fit in her physical form, she was prepared to let go of a lot of it when she returned to her body. All is everything, and everything is one. I think the public needs to know that near-death experiences, NDs, are real because if they believe them, they'll seek out the love and harmony that are at their core. Unity is ours. When people get this, they'll stay united. NDs are hard to prove scientifically because you can't nearly murder someone, bring them back to life, and then study their experience. However, there are several accounts of OBEs that can be proven called veridical experiences or veridical observations. These provide some proof that NDs occur. As a first step in a near-death experience, NDE, many report floating freely around the location where they left their bodies, which can be anywhere from a hospital to the scene of an accident. Everything going on around them is visible to them. As an example, a patient stepped out of the hospital's window and noticed a shoe resting on the roof's edge. This shoe was subsequently located and verified separately. A patient going under the knife is yet another illustration. While in the NDE, the witness saw the surgeon meticulously instructing the nurses, his hands resting on his chest while he pointed outward with his elbows. Surgeons didn't normally do this, but it was unique to this case. The nurses found out about this when the patient emerged from surgery and phoned Bruce Grayson, a leading expert on near-death experiences, NDIS. He independently confirmed the specifics by interviewing the patient surgeon, and nurses, proving that at least the initial phase of a near-death experience, NDE, 
is real. Even though I work in economics, I'm interested in spirituality, and Raymond Moody's book piqued my interest in near-death experiences. I started drawing parallels between NDs and the five main faiths, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, and Hinduism to find similarities and differences. Love and kindness are major themes, and there are some similarities. If you listen to NDers, they will tell you that God is inside each of us. Every one of us has an innate divinity that expresses our connection to the divine, the universe, or whatever you want to call it. I discuss each faith in my book, pointing out where it differs from love and where it is similar. Remember that religions are made by people, mostly men, and that some of their beliefs and practices don't fit with the sense of oneness and love one experiences in near-death experience. Near-death experiences, and these, can happen in many contexts, not just in medical emergencies. Although NDs are often linked to cardiac arrests and accidents, modern science has shown that they can also occur while meditating, praying, or having a severe mental breakdown. One such incident was Rene Jorgensen, who was chatting with a friend on an Indian beach when he had an NDE overnight. He saw light, saw earth from afar, and reviewed his life. While reflecting on his life, he realized the impact he had on the women he had met. Despite his attractiveness, he was unfaithful to many of his relationships. A near-death experience, NDE, is like a life-changing dream. Rene returned to the beach and apologized to his ex-girlfriends. Now he's a great person who volunteers in the social sector. You know, there's a difference between dreams, hallucinations, and near-death experiences, and is. Most people don't remember their dreams because they fade away within a day or two. However, near-death experiences are remembered clearly and can be recounted even after a long time. Compared to hallucinations or dreams, near-death experiences, and these are completely illogical. According to those who have had NDs, the location they were in during the event is more genuine than our current reality. My book says the essence of the light is peace times a million and war represents darkness, while light represents harmony and love without conditions. War is obviously unnecessary. Conflicts are breaking out in several parts of the world, such as the point of being here is to live, and that means having the flexibility to do what makes you happy. It doesn't matter if you hurt others. No one will stop you from going left or right. Will you find joy in reviewing your life's events? No, I don't think you will. After drowning, an American Boy Scout reviewed his life and the things he had done to others from both his own and the other person's perspectives as he neared death. He said, I hope I'm not going to be judged too severely. Finally, the angel said, Well, you're judged by the most powerful judge there is. The child asked, When will this happen? With anxiety, the angel said, It has already happened, and everyone looks to you as the judge. It's up to you to decide. This means you must be honest with yourself and realize that war, murder, and deceit cannot bring more love into the world. You won't be able to enjoy it because you'll be experiencing it from the receiver's perspective. Life can feel like a zero-sum game. You can't act irresponsibly and expect to escape responsibility for your actions. Reflecting on your life will help you sense it. No one should feel guilty about hurting others. The point is to get a sense for both sides. This is a part of oneness. Therefore, be kind to others and do good deeds, and you will rejoice when you look back on your life review. This lesson is for everyone, including me. Near-death experiences teach us that we are all intricately linked. No one wins in life, and we all have the light within us. Do you think it's good? Go about your day as usual, doing your job but remembering that you are part of the greater whole. Your actions toward others reflect your attitude toward God, the Supreme Being, or even yourself. All living things, including the environment, benefit from a shift in human behavior toward more self-awareness and action. I want to share Christina's four keys to happiness, love, being loved, just being, and living life to the fullest. Always remember that you are precious and adored without condition by God, the Supreme Being, and that this validates your inherent worth. Thank you for bearing with me.